Hello everyone, Dawn Tack is here. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you stopping by. Today, I am gonna share with you my three favorite things that you must have for your sewing room, and two of them you're gonna make yourself, and I'm gonna show you how. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Dawn Takis, the Streamlined Seamstress, and this channel was inspired to help you learn how to save time, money, and energy, and it all began back when COVID started, and I started teaching people on how to improve their sewing skills and how to make masks faster and better, and that just evolved into so much more. My background, I was a pattern maker and a seamstress and I owned a sewing factory. So I've been on the industrial side of this all of my life and I'm sharing those hacks and tips and tricks with you so that I can save you time, money, and energy. And so today, there are three things that I swear by that you have to have in your sewing room. And I am so excited to share this with you and show you how to make Ta -da, my Wonder Woman bracelet. This is a magnetic bracelet. And if you can see, and I'm hoping that the camera will be able to show you just how small this is. And I made this out of scraps from the Dream Mask pattern from uh, Stretch Knit. And it's a little bit stretchy. It's very comfortable. I actually, it's so comfortable. Sometimes I wear it outside and don't realize that I have it on. But as you can see, it's just a magnetic pin cushion. And so it's just gonna catch your pins as you're sewing. It's small, it's thin, it's lightweight, it's very comfortable. So I'm gonna show you how to make this in like two minutes. And then we are gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna show you how to make this little flat, very thin, very lightweight magnetic pin cushion for sewing. So, and I've got one more thing to share with you and that's like, it kind of brings it all together. So stay tuned, here we go. Let's get ready, let's sew. So I have a great Jersey knit fabric that I'm working with and I've cut this eight and three quarters of an inch by two inches and I'm referencing the measurement on my wrist just to double check it. And that's coming in at about eight and a quarter inch. So it's gonna cut slightly larger than your wrist and you just need that for your folds and your hems. I've got a great stretch fabric and I'm just gonna fold this in half. I'm gonna sew a tube at three eighths of an inch. So that finished, I have about a half inch of tube in order to insert my magnets. Back tack to begin and then just straight down. And please make sure that you have the right needle. Oftentimes people use the wrong needle. Make sure that you have either a stretch or a jersey knit needle in your machine when you're sewing a stretch or jersey knit fabric. I also recommend a plastic foot when you're sewing any kind of stretch fabrics. They actually just work better feeding the feed dogs. And here I'm just going to trim the excess. It's a knit so we don't have to worry about that raw edge with my favorite Ginger shears that I've had almost 20, 30, 30 years. I've had them 30 years, wow. So I'll put that link for you below on Ginger, but, and now I'm gonna use a loop turner from Dritz, and I am gonna use this loop turner just to turn this right side out. You can see it's got a little fishing hook there that just grabs the fabric, makes it super easy for me to just turn and just pull that straight through. If you've got any uh, hand dexterity problems, you definitely want one of those loop turners. They're a great tool. The next part of this process is to add in the magnetic pieces that I use, and I buy name tags from Amazon, magnetic name tags, and I'll put a link below for you. And one side is a metal plate, and the other side is the part of the name tag that would go inside your shirt. So I'm gonna put that inside my wristlet, and I'm just gonna center it, I don't need to sew it in. And you can see that magnetic, uh, the plate on top of it is just gonna keep it in position for me while I'm sewing. You have to be careful, sometimes the magnets will mess with your machine, so it's always important to have that plate on there when you have it anywhere near your sewing machine. So I am gonna pin each side of the wristlet at three quarters of an inch. I've put in my metal half inch bra back closure. I happen to have had those in inventory from the swimsuit factory. And again, I'm gonna do it on this side, except this side I'm gonna do two seams just so that I have an adjustment seam to make the wristlet tighter if I want. And I'm just gonna pin it. 
and I the seam to connect the tube I have running parallel down one side I did not center it you can center it if you want but that's what I preferred and I'm just going to sew it 3 8 of an inch a straight stitch straight across back tacking at the beginning and at the end and now the other side I'm going to do those two seams at 3 8 of an inch for the first one straight stitch and then I'm going to do a second one to complete the magnetic wristlet and once you have these, one of these, I promise you, you'll never go back to a pin cushion. <laughs> They're just so fabulous. It's lightweight. It's functional. You can use it while you're sewing. It's very comfortable. So comfortable that I wear mine outside of the house and I don't even realize that I've worn it. Just so simple to make. I mean, that took me all of three minutes. Even if you're new, I can say you could probably do it under seven, ten max. Just make sure you have the right needle and that you're using a plastic foot if you're sewing any kind of knit. But other than that, that's it. I'm gonna show you how this looks on. And it's chic, stylish, functional, and it's definitely a great hack for your sewing room. And just look how it just grabs the pins. I love this because I hate pins and I hate pins on the floor. And I love that I can turn my wrist upside down and just grab all the pins off my table. That is such a plus. Or while I'm sewing, I can just push it to the wristlet. We had a drawing to complete from the last video. So let's go ahead and do that. And I am going to say when I post this video, whoever has comment number 25, because that was my mother-in-law's birthday, 25, February 5th. Whoever has comment number 25 when I post this video is going to win that loop turner. And I'm going to send that to you directly from Amazon. So to start the pin cushion, you're going to cut a piece of fabric that's seven by five and also a piece of interfacing to match. This is fusible pull-on interfacing. It's going to be a little rough on one side. That's the side that fuses to the wrong side of your cotton and then smooth and clean like linen on the other side. I'm going to use my iron to give this a nice press. I love my Black & Decker classic iron. It has this button on the top and that button gives me just a quick press of steam. I love this iron. It reminds me of the one that my mom had when I learned how to sew. Like I'm going to put a link below for you guys because uh, it's available on Amazon and it's actually very affordable. And so now I'm going to put the wrong side or the bubbly side of the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric. And as you can see, I cut it just a little bit shy of the five by seven because interfacing has a tendency to grow when it gets hot. So we want it just a little bit short. It doesn't have to be the exact same size as the template that you've cut. Press on the outside just to make sure that everything's sticking, sticking together well. And here we go. Now I'm going to do some seams to indicate or some pressing um, to indicate seams. So I'm pressing it in half. And that's going to be my folds. And then I'm going to press it again the opposite direction. And that's going to indicate my center seam. And I'm going to show that to you. I'm just giving it another little quick press there. So we have a cross pressed, uh, basically, go in both directions. And I'm going to fold it in half. And as you can see, there's a seam down the center that's separating the two magnets. So I'm going to sew at a quarter inch across and down. I'm going to turn it right side out. And then I'm going to tuck and fold and put that magnet in there. And then I'm going to do a seam, a top stitch to close that magnet in. And as you can see, I've already stitched down the two sides. I used pinking shears just to give myself a nice clean finish as close to the seam as possible. And I'm using my bamboo pointer to just push out those corners for nice pretty corners. And now I'm gonna add that magnet and then do that center seam first. 
and the magnets I'm using are the same ones that were used for the magnetic bracelet or magnetic wristlet. And it's the same process. I'm going to put the magnet, the name tag magnetic back inside the pocket. And then I'm going to put the metal plate on top. And that metal plate is going to keep that magnet from giving me any trouble while I'm sewing. And I'm going to have a magnet on both sides, but I'm going to sew the seam down the center to separate them. A little back tack. And then just straight down and a little back tack. Now I'm going to tuck, fold, finger press to close. I'm going to put another magnet in first. And I'm going to do the same thing with the metal plate. I'm going to put that metal plate on top so that that magnet doesn't move and it doesn't give me any trouble while I'm sewing. So just a tuck and fold finger press. I'm going to put a couple pins in to hold everything in place. We just want to get nice pretty corners. Working with ballpoint pins today. Love them. And as you can see, I'm putting them on a slight diagonal. I know a lot of people put them straight across. I find when you put them on just a little slope or a little diagonal, it has a better result as far as the pins not giving you any trouble. And as you can see, I'm feeding the pins to my bracelet. And you're going to love it. You're going to love that bracelet. And I'm just back tacking on the corners. And I'm moving that magnet now just to make sure that one that was at the bottom of the pocket was in my way. So I just moved it and put the metal plate on top of it to secure it. But I'm almost finished here. I'm sewing at, uh, I believe, an eighth of an inch, just the top stitch all the way around. And there you go. You've got this amazing flat pin cushion that's going to just grab your pins. It probably holds anywhere from 100 to 200 pins. So the third thing that's a must-have for your sewing room that kind of comes together and brings everything together that we just made for ourselves, our magnetic pin cushion bracelet and our magnetic flat pin cushion that <laughs> is right here and the third thing that is a must-have and I'm gonna tell you I've been sewing for 40 plus years I've been sewing since I was eight years old so yeah it's almost 50 years and through the years I have purchased many many lamps for sewing and I've purchased those fancy lamps that you can get at the fabric store the ones that are supposed to be you know specific for sewing and I usually return them or I keep them and regret that I kept them and thinking that I'm going to like them better and through the years I have found out that I love this lamp and it's by Allen and Roth and I'm going to put the link below for you so if you're interested you can just click that link but I love this lamp it's a metal lamp it's bendable it's flexible it doesn't get hot on me and I can put tiny magnets on it and with tiny magnets I can then connect things that I need quickly and immediately while I'm sewing and let me show you that okay as you can see I have my sewing needle already prepped and with a little tiny magnet I can just connect it to my lamp easy to access as is my second needle that I'm always using with my machine and my loop turner, I can connect that. It gets buried in my drawer. I like it right there. It's quick and fast to grab. And my bias tape maker, which I always seem to lose in my sewing room and connecting it to my lamp with a tiny magnet is perfect. I'm gonna put the link for the magnets below for you guys as well. But I love this lamp. It's flexible, it's bendable. I can bring it in for more light as needed. It's never hot to the touch. The fluorescent bulb gives me great bright white light so that I can see clearly. As you can see, the banana yellow is just showing so beautifully here. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and then ring the little bell, subscribe, <laughs> ring the bell, let you know when I post a new video. I apologize, the videos uh, were slow coming last month and that is because we had a death in the family, but I'm back at it and I have some great videos coming up for $10 gifts that you can make for the holidays for your loved ones. So everyone be well, thank you for joining, take care and God bless. Keep sewing, it's good for the soul.